This video is part of consumer theory. In this video, I will introduce the concepts of income and substitution effects. Income and substitution effects are tools economists use to explain how and why a utility maximizing consumer responds to a change in the price of a good. We've seen how changing the price of a good, like changing the price of X, either lowering it or increasing it, will cause the budget line to rotate. When the price of X goes down, the budget line rotates out, and when the price of X goes up, the budget line rotates in. In this one rotation, there are actually two different changes. First, when the budget line gets flatter, the absolute value of its slope gets lower. The absolute value of the slope of the budget line is the price of X divided by the price of Y. What this means is that lowering the price of X lowers the opportunity cost of buying X in terms of Y. Because the opportunity cost of X is lower, there's a voice in the consumer's head that says, I want to now buy more X and less Y because for every X I buy, I don't have to give up as much Y. Similarly, when the price of X goes up, the budget line now gets steeper, which means in absolute value, the slope of the budget line or the relative price of X or the opportunity cost of X is higher. This induces an effect or a voice in a consumer's head that says, I don't want to buy as much X compared to before. Instead, I want to substitute towards Y and away from X because the opportunity cost of X is higher. Changing the price of X not only changes the slope of the budget line, but it also changes the affordable set. When the price of X goes down, the affordable set expands or the budget set increases, increasing the consumer's purchasing power. For the same amount of income, because the price of X is lower, the consumer now feels richer. Feeling richer will induce her to want to buy more normal goods and fewer inferior goods. When the price of X goes up, the budget line rotates in, shrinking the budget set, lowering the consumer's purchasing power. Now the consumer feels poor, and when he feels poorer, he buys fewer normal goods and more inferior goods. When the price of X changes, both of these effects happen at the same time. The slope of the budget line changes and purchasing power changes. Both comprise what we call the total effect of a price change. The total effect is what we observe or what actually happens. But economists have these tools of income and substitution effects to try to disentangle what actually happens into the part due to the change in the opportunity cost of X and the part due to the change in the purchasing power. The impact on consumption of a change in the relative price of X in terms of Y is called the substitution effect. The impact on consumption due to a change in purchasing power is called the income effect. I'll formally define each next. Holding preferences, other prices, and income constant, a change in the price of a good has two effects on an individual's demand. The first is called the substitution effect. This is the change in the quantity demanded due to a change in the good's relative price. The second is the income effect. This is the change in the consumer's quantity demanded when there's a change in purchasing power. Again, when the price of a good changes, both the relative price of that good and purchasing power change at the same time. The substitution effect seeks to isolate the impact on consumption due only to the change in relative price and therefore holds the consumer's purchasing power or utility, and I'll explain the difference in those two later, constant. The income effect seeks to isolate the impact on consumption due to purchasing power changing, and so holds relative prices constant. The total effect is the sum or the combination of the substitution and income effects 
and is what actually happens to the quantity demanded when the price of a good changes. Once again, the substitution effect is the change in an individual's consumption of the good due to the fact that the relative prices between the goods have changed, controlling for the income effect. For indifference curves that are downward sloping and convex, the substitution effect always shows the consumer substituting away from the good whose relative price increased and towards the good whose relative price decreased. More specifically, when the price of X goes down, the substitution effect will increase consumption of X and decrease consumption of Y. When the price of X goes up, the substitution effect will decrease consumption of X and increase consumption of Y. Notice that the substitution effect is always increasing consumption of one and reducing consumption of the other. The substitution effect has the consumer substituting towards one good and away from the other. The income effect of a price change is the change in an individual's consumption of the good due to the fact that the individual's budget set has changed, controlling for the substitution effect. Unlike the substitution effect, which is the same for all types of goods, the income effect depends on whether a good is normal, inferior, or income neutral. If the price of a good decreases, then a consumer feels richer and her demand for normal goods will increase while her demand for inferior goods will decrease. On the other hand, if the price of a good increases, then a consumer feels poorer and her demand for normal goods will decrease while her demand for inferior goods will increase. A chart is a very useful tool for summarizing the income and substitution effects of a price change and for considering different cases. For example, let's first consider when both goods, X and Y, are normal goods. Suppose the price of good X falls. The relative price of X in terms of Y therefore falls lowering the opportunity cost of buying X. This induces a substitution effect that pulls up consumption of X while lowering consumption of Y. At the same time, when the price of X falls, the consumer's purchasing power rises. The consumer feels richer and so experiences an income effect that pulls up consumption of both goods since both are regarded as normal goods. Add up these two effects, the substitution plus the income effect, to get the total effect. In this first case, the total effect on X is unambiguous. Both effects increase the consumption of X, and so in total, the consumption of X will increase. For this reason, all normal goods have to follow the law of demand, because for example, when the price of X goes down, unambiguously the total effect will pull consumption of X up, giving us that inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. On the other hand, the effect on Y is ambiguous. On the one hand, the consumer wants to substitute away from Y, but on the other hand, he wants to buy more Y because his purchasing power has increased and Y is a normal good. What actually happens to Y will therefore depend on the relative magnitudes of the income and substitution effects. Without that information, I don't know the total effect on Y. As a second example, now let's say that X is inferior while Y is normal. Once again, suppose the price of good X falls. The opportunity cost of X is therefore lower, inducing a substitution effect that pulls X up and Y down. Because the price of X falls, purchasing power rises, making the consumer feel richer. Now since X is inferior, the income effect pulls X down, and since Y is normal, the income effect pulls Y up. In this case, the total effect is ambiguous for both of the goods. For good X, there's one voice in the consumer's head saying, let's buy more X because its opportunity cost is lower. But there's another voice saying, well, we feel richer 
and x is inferior, so let's buy less x. What actually happens to x in the total effect depends on how strong the income effect is relative to the substitution effect. Suppose first that the substitution effect on x is dominant to the income effect on x. In that case, the total effect will cause consumption of x to go up. Because the total effect pulls x up, when the price of x goes down, the law of demand holds for good x. So good x is an inferior good that does not break the law of demand. However, this isn't the only possibility. As shown here, it's possible for x to be inferior and have an income effect that dominates the substitution effect. So the voice that says buy more x is overpowered by the voice that says buy less x, and what the consumer actually does is buy less x. Notice that in doing so, this consumer violates the law of demand. The price of x goes down, and what she actually does is buy less of good x. We call this good a Giffen good. A Giffen good necessarily has two defining properties. The first is that all Giffen goods are necessarily inferior goods by definition, and they're inferior goods for which the income effect is stronger than the substitution effect, leading to a total effect that breaks the law of demand. The third possibility when X is inferior is that the income and substitution effects will be equal magnitude and therefore cancel each other out. In this case, when the price of X goes down, there's no change in the consumption of X, and so the demand for good X is perfectly inelastic. Finally, note that we can't fill in the total effect for Y in any of these cases. Just because the substitution effect is dominant for good X doesn't mean it has to be dominant for good Y. Just because the income effect is dominant for good X doesn't mean that also has to be true for good Y. So without more information, we can't fill in the total effect on Y for any of these four cases.